All right, good morning, everyone. We will go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's first Thursday Build a Better Work Lunch presentation. Before we get started, just a few quick things. We are recording today's session. We'll be sending a copy out to all the attendees, and you are welcome to watch it again or share it with any colleague who may not have been able to attend today. Today's presentation is done in March specifically in honor of National Nutrition Month. If you're unfamiliar, every March is National Nutrition Month where we celebrate different ways that we can work on our diet, our food, and our lifestyle to lead healthier lives. And today's presentation is all If you have any questions or comments during today's presentation, please feel free to use the WebEx chat feature. We'll be monitoring that and be sure to address any that may arise. A little bit about me, my name is Ryan Smith. I am the Wellness Program Administrator here at Georgia State University with Employee Development and Wellness Services. By trade, I am a registered and licensed dietitian nutritionist. Uh, so National Nutrition Month is very important to me. It is kind of that foundation uh, with my profession. So I'm always excited to talk about it and share this kind of information. So all the nutrition facts and details that I'll be talking about today come from that nutrition background that I have. Our objectives today are to discuss the components of a healthy lunch. We wanna break down what it is that we are building to. We wanna learn the principles of meal prepping so that you can feel more comfortable and practice with setting up meals. We want to explore our employee nutrition resources. There's a wide variety of tools available to you. We wanna make sure to talk about those. And then we're gonna just review some healthy recipe ideas, give you a few action items that you might be able to take with you today in order to set up a healthy recipe in the near future. So balancing your plate. A lot of you have probably seen this image before. If you've been to some of my past presentations, it's possible I've shared it with you. If you've got school children, you may have seen it at their classrooms, uh, or you may have just come across it on your own. And the idea behind this photo is that it is a very simplified approach to how we would set up a healthy meal. We try to balance our plate using healthy choices from each of the five food groups, fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. We'll talk a little bit about what each of those groups encompass and what foods can be included in them. And when I say dairy, I do wanna point out that not everyone consumes dairy foods. The dairy group is mainly looking for calcium and vitamin D rich foods. So if you don't consume cow's milk, things like almond milk, soy milk, yogurt, there are a lot of alternatives we can look to that will still provide the nutrients that we want from that group. So overall, when we're talking about nutrients, there are some things we want more of, some things we want a little less of, and then some things that we wanna find the balance with. So nutrients that we want more of, we're looking for fiber, vitamins, and minerals. These are things that are very helpful for our body. Fruits and vegetables are a great way to get these vitamins and minerals in. So generally speaking, we're looking for recipes that are rich in fiber, vitamins, and minerals. For things that we want to balance, this means that we want some of these. They are, it's good for our body, but we want to make sure that we're doing it in the right proportions. So that's going to include total fat, carbohydrates, and protein. Some nutrients can kind of get uh, a little bit of a bad rap. Lately, there's been a lot in the media about carbohydrates um, and people trying to cut out carbohydrates or do a very low carbohydrate diet. For some people that may be beneficial, but carbohydrates are not a negative thing. If we are choosing healthy sources of carbohydrates like fruits, sweet potatoes, quinoa, brown rice, whole wheat bread, those are very healthy for us. We just wanna make sure that we don't overdo it. The same thing goes for fat. In the 90s and early 2000s, a lot of products and diets were focused on cutting out fat or being low fat, but our body does need fat in food. It's an important nutrient for us. So we want to have a balance of fat, carbohydrate, and protein. Nutrients that we want to do less of are things that are not quite as healthy for our body. So saturated and trans fats, we want to try to keep as low as we can. Sodium is something that we need a small amount of, but most Americans get way more salt or sodium than we need in our diet. So we want to try to reduce that. 
And then lastly, there are added sugars, which are sugars that we add to foods that aren't there naturally. So something like an apple or a piece of fruit is filled with natural sugars. Something like a soda is all added sugar. So we want to try to cut down on the added sugars from things like soda, candy, and other sweets. So thinking about those basic ideas, let's go into what we want to do when we're meal prepping. If you've done it before, you may be familiar with some of these tactics, but it's always good to have a refresher on what we can set up in order to make the process faster, easier, and just make our meals more successful during the week. So number one is to focus on simplicity before variety. If you are new to meal prepping, this might be the most important tip. Starting with simple meals containing a small number of easy to find ingredients. You might see some really exciting recipes online and get really motivated and want to cook something very complicated. And if you've got the experience for it, that's great. But if you're just starting off, you don't need to make it really, really complicated. It can be as simple, and I love this picture on the left here. This is kind of what we think of um, maybe if we're having like uh, making a lunch for a child, right? But the principles are still there. That is still healthy food put together. Uh, and I will tell you as a dietitian, I love peanut butter sandwiches. Um, I eat them all the time. They're very convenient and I can mix them with other foods to be a healthy balanced meal and it's simple. So on this photo on the left, we can see the food groups. We can have some whole wheat bread for our sandwich to get in a healthy grain. We've got some peanut butter to bring in some protein. We've got celery and carrots as our vegetable and some strawberries and blueberries as our fruit. So we can see how we are checking off those food group boxes with a very simple to make meal. So your meal prep does not have to be complicated. It's good to start simple. Tip number two is to batch cook whenever possible. So this means cooking in larger quantities so you can refrigerate or freeze the leftovers to eat later. It can save you so much time if you think ahead and do this. I recommend focusing on your most difficult meal to prepare during the week and batch cook that one to make it easier. So for example, if you know, maybe you do really well with breakfast and lunch, those are a given and you handle them pretty well. But maybe dinner after work and after dealing with your other responsibilities, maybe that meal gets tough and you find yourself running out of time at the end of the day to make a healthy meal. If that's the one that's difficult for you, it could be a good idea to take some time on the weekend or on a day off to batch cook your dinners to save you that time when you really need it. Tip number three is to reuse creatively. So keep in mind that when we think of meal prep, some people imagine having to eat the exact same thing every day of the week, and it doesn't have to be like that. The same food that you prep can be used in multiple creative ways throughout the week. So think of like a protein like chicken, for example. It can be eaten on its own with some sides. It could be in a wrap, in a soup, in a sandwich, or on a salad. So doing something as simple as preparing chicken breast on a Sunday can yield several different types and varieties of meals throughout the week because you've already taken the time to set that protein up. The same thing can be said of other foods as well. Maybe you wanna make some brown rice in advance and each day you add different veggies or a different protein to it to add that variety. Tip number four is to prioritize fruits and veggies. In that picture I showed with the different food groups, we want fruits and vegetables to take up at least half of our plate. They are very healthy for us. You can find ways to work fruits and vegetables into every meal, as these foods are rich in nutrients and lower in calories. When it comes to storage containers for meal prepping, there are a lot of different options out there. You'll wanna think about the different applications you'll need for your storage container to make sure you find the right kind. For example, you may want one that's oven safe so that you can cook things or heat things in the oven. I would definitely recommend getting one that's microwave safe since a lot of meals you're going to want to heat up again and not all containers are guaranteed to be microwave safe. So you want to look for that. Dishwasher safe is very important. Uh, you know, we are doing this to save time. And if you dirty up a bunch of meal prep containers and then have to hand wash them all, that takes up more time and you also might find that you just don't end up using the containers because they're a hassle and then we're kind of defeating the point. We also want them to be freezer safe in case you are making meals that you are freezing ahead of time to then reheat later. Leak and spill proof is important too. 
Some containers will come with a little rubber piece that will help it stay sealed, and that can be really beneficial. If you're carrying it to work with you, for example, you definitely don't want it to spill over your belongings, so it's nice to find a high-quality container like that. You can find meal prep containers online on different stores. Uh, you can also find them in person. I've been at grocery stores and places like Walmart or Target, and they're very popular right now. You can buy them there as well. So prepping steps, let's kind of break it down. Number one is to meal plan, of course. So take the time to choose a recipe and plan how it will fit into your week. This can take some time to find something online that sounds appealing and to figure out when during the week you might schedule it to eat it. This is an important first step though, so don't skip it. Step number two is of course to go shopping. Get organized with a shopping list, take inventory of what you already have on hand, and this can take anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. You may find that you have a lot of the ingredients already, or you may need to make a trip to the store. It's important to keep that in mind though, because when people meal prep, we want to take into consideration not just the time to prep the meals, but the, type to, the time to plan, to go shopping, acquire the ingredients. It's all part of things, and we want to make sure that we allot the right amount of space in our day to do it. Whenever we're scheduling things, it can be really helpful to use a calendar. This is an example of a weekly calendar that helps you create a grocery game plan. There's a link to this in the PowerPoint, and we'll be sending it out in our follow-up email today if you're curious. You can print this out, or you can type directly onto it. It gives you the opportunity to plan out meals Sunday through Saturday, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Now, if you're new to meal prepping, it might be overwhelming to imagine planning all of these different things. But remember, you don't have to plan out the entire week. If you've got a particular meal you want to work on, maybe just start there. Maybe you'd like to have a healthier breakfast in the morning to give you energy when you're at work. You could still use this calendar and just focus on that breakfast row there and make sure that you are planning that out. Then, if you feel more comfortable or confident, you can start to plan out other meals as needed. This is another tool we'll be sending out a link to for those who may want to download it. You can print it or type directly on it again, and this is a grocery list. Now, I'm sure we've all used grocery lists before, maybe on our phone or just on a notepad or a sticky note. They're very useful. Going into the grocery store with a plan can save you time, but it can also prevent you from picking up those extras that might not be as healthy for you. One thing I really like about this list is that it's broken down into food groups. So as we're trying to find that balance and set up our plate to be healthy, I think looking at a list that's categorized this way can make you really aware of the spaces that you're doing well in and some places where there might be some gaps. For example, maybe you fill this out and you find out I'm going to the store, I'm getting lots of grains, I'm getting protein foods, getting plenty of fruits, but I'm not actually picking up that many vegetables. And when you look at the list, it can make you aware of that and maybe you'll decide to pick up an extra vegetable or find something fun and creative there that you can try in order to balance that diet. For foods that don't fit into the traditional food group, things like candy, chips, desserts, there is an other category there where you can put them. Something to keep in mind is that those other foods are foods we can enjoy, but we want to do a little bit less of. So try to make the healthier groups take up more of your grocery list than those other foods. So let's talk through the prepping steps. Number three, after we've planned and we have gone to the grocery store, number three is of course to review the recipe. So read the entire recipe to get familiar with the steps before starting. It only takes a couple minutes uh, and it's tempting to skip this and just dive right in, but I can tell you as someone who cooks fairly frequently, uh, if you've seen me do my live cooking demonstrations, you know, it is very important to read through the recipe first. I cannot tell you uh, in previous years, when I used to try to skip and just jump right into making the recipe, it's easy to get a couple steps in and realize you've made a mistake or that you were supposed to be prepping something in advance and letting it sit out. Uh, and that can end up wasting some of your time and put a delay on things. So take a couple minutes, read through the recipe and get familiar with it. Step number four is to prep the ingredients. I highly recommend having the ingredients prepped and measured before starting to cook. Pretend that you're on a cooking TV show uh, and that when it comes time to cook, all you're doing is really dumping the different things you've measured into different containers and cooking them. If you prep all at once and get your vegetables chopped, 
your meat chopped up, things like that, your seasonings measured out, it can save you a lot of time during the cooking process. Step number five is, of course, to cook the ingredients. Follow that recipe and get cooking and clean as you go during downtime. If you're waiting on something to boil or cook or bake or anything like that, go ahead and start cleaning up some of the dishes, wiping down the counter. It can be very, very difficult to finish your recipe, be tired from the work of cooking, uh, and then realize, oh no, I've got a kitchen full of dirty dishes and now I have to clean those too. So cleaning as you go, very beneficial and will make you feel better at the end of it. Um, I see a comment here, someone just kind of testifying that recipe review is very important. They know for a fact, sounds like they've had some personal experiences as well, where they may have uh, accidentally forgotten to review it. And then step number six is to divide and store. So divide your portions into containers and store them in the fridge or freezer, depending on the recipe. That'll set you up for success later in the week. So those are just some basic meal prepping steps. You know, it, it can sound simple on paper to some people. It can sound overwhelming to others. Just keep in mind that if you follow those steps, you will get practice with it. You'll get more confident and you'll build up that success. And it's such a valuable tool. Again, you don't have to meal prep every meal. And in fact, I recommend starting small and just picking one meal or even a snack. You can start by just snack prepping to take something with you that's a little healthier. And you can get that practice and get your confidence built up. Let's talk a little bit about some of the nutrition resources that are available to all of you. So one resource I want to highlight is called Zapongo. So this is a free resource available for all USG employees through Virgin Pulse. So if you're not familiar with Virgin Pulse, it is our well-being platform. Lots of great stuff on there, including sleep tracking and physical activity tracking. But they also have a nutrition section where you can access Zapongo and get all sorts of personalized information. It gives you nutrition insights, diet profiling, meal plans, and more. It's available on the browser of a web, or uh, sorry, the browser of any internet browser that you may have on your computer, or you can use the application on your mobile device. You can log in with your USG Wellbeing username at zapongo.com or on the Zapongo app. What I love about it is that it is customized. When you set up your profile, you can answer some questions about what type of foods you like, what your tendency to eat different things is, and it will generate some different results for you here and a profile to tell you, hey, you're doing great on vegetables, but let's maybe work on fruit and try to get that target up a little bit higher. So it gives you some good personalized feedback that's very convenient. And they have over a million recipes on there. I pull a lot of my cooking demonstration recipes from there with great categories too. You can find foods that are in season, foods that are lower in calories, foods that can be made in 15 minutes or less for when you just need a quick meal. So lots of great recipes that you can get for free. And when I mentioned that you can get a custom nutrition profile, this is just an example of one that I filled out. Uh, I was kind of just making some numbers up to see what it would look like. And you can see in this printout here that I answered, uh, put in my different preferences and, and food intake. And for this sample person that I made up, it said, you know, hey, you're doing really well in a lot of categories. Look at all that green. But you're not getting um, as much water as you could be. So try to work on your water intake a little bit, or you're going a little over on added sugars. Try to cut down on the total amount of added sugar you have throughout the day. So this could be a really good place to get some ideas for how you might make some lifestyle changes. Now, I won't spend too much time here, but I wanna give you some examples of some healthy recipes that are all from the Zapongo platform. These are designed to be good for meal prepping. So this first one is an eight layer taco salad. It takes 30 minutes to make and you get six servings out of it, which is phenomenal. There's a good bit of protein in it and some vegetables as well to give us that nice balance. And as we look through the ingredient list, we can identify the different food groups. We've got some healthy fats coming from the canola oil. We've got a healthy lean protein source from the turkey. We've got an avocado providing us some additional healthy fats, some plain Greek yogurt to give us some dairy foods, some tortilla chips, which are giving us a little bit of grains, we have some salsa, some beans, some lettuce and tomato to give us some vegetables so we can see how all those food groups are coming together. 
And when we send out the PowerPoint, you'll have access to these recipes as well, in case any of them look appealing to you and you'd like to try to make them. Now, these vegan black bean burgers are great if you're looking for a plant-based option. The protein source in them is coming from the black beans, and we also have some quinoa that we're using to give us a little bit of extra protein and be our healthy whole grain. We have some vegetables coming from different sources like the tomato. We are putting some avocado on there and making this really, really good uh, avocado sauce that tops the burger. I've made these before for a cooking demonstration, and I love them and my friends love them as well, so definitely recommend this. Here's a kale salad with spiced tofu and chickpeas. So if you're someone who's into salads, we are making the salads here. Lots of vegetables from the peppers and the greens adding some uh, carbohydrates from our chickpeas and some additional protein from the tofu. It all comes together very nicely. The spice on there has a nice kick to it, and I've enjoyed this one as well. Okay, I see a question about how would we prep this without getting wilty or soggy? So that's a, that's a great question, and it's something to bring up. And that's that not all recipes are created equally when it comes to reheating them, right? Like we can imagine something like chili. Chili is great because you can put it in the freezer. It could be there for months um, and you are able to thaw it and reheat it and it works really, really well. Um, some things like a salad, for example, you're not really going to freeze a salad. It's not going to work out very well. So the best thing to do would be to refrigerate it in individual containers. Something that can be very helpful for things that you're worried about getting wilted is if it's something with a sauce. Uh, so looking at like the taco, the eight layer taco thing. What was it called? I've forgotten the name of it already. Let's go back to that real quick. Eight layer taco salad. Um, something like the eight layer taco salad, the ingredients that are more prone to spoilage would be anything that's like a vegetable combined with a sauce. So if we think of the avocado, getting mixed in there with the Greek yogurt to make that kind of creamy sauce. That's something that you could package separately in the refrigerator and top it on the salad whenever it's time to eat it. The same idea will go for the vegan black bean burgers. If you are not planning to eat them all at once and you are meal prepping them throughout the week, make the burgers and make the sauce separately. Keep that sauce or dressing in an airtight container and only apply it when it's time to eat the food. This will help all the food stay a little bit firmer and make it less likely to get mushy or soggy. Same idea with salads. You can keep the dressing separately and add it in when it's time to eat. Some people don't mind mixing it all together and eating it that way, but if you are someone who notices things getting a little mushy or soggy, keeping those liquids and the dressing separate until it's time to consume can help a lot. This is a salmon salad sandwich. This one's really simple. We're basically just using some canned salmon, keeping it really affordable, um, some different vegetables chopped up in there, putting in our whole wheat bread, getting some tomato and lettuce, and you've got a lean source of protein and some veggies in there to help complement that meal. Here's another example. This is a pesto pasta. We're using whole wheat pasta to be a little bit healthier. We've got some broccoli florets, some basil, uh, we have some pine nuts in there to give it some interesting flavor to make that pesto part happen. Cherry tomatoes that are chopped up. Very nutritious. If you love pasta, this is a great dish. It also reheats very well. I think pasta is something that holds up pretty well in the refrigerator, and then you can microwave it, and it still tastes very good afterwards. And then I, I believe this is the last sample recipe we're showing here. We just have a nice little Mediterranean beef stir fry where we are using some three ounces of top sirloin. So we're getting some red meat in there, but sirloin is a leaner cut of it. So it is a healthier choice. We are using eggplant and cherry tomatoes and zucchini to give a lot of different vegetables. Um, just to really bring out a lot of fun flavors and complement the sirloin there. This one is a little bit lower in carbohydrates, which could be beneficial if you're looking for that, or you could choose to serve it with something on the side to balance it out a little more. The nutrition information is available for all of these recipes and will be included with those slides. I also want to highlight, I mentioned that I do cooking demonstrations. On our website, we have uh, an online e-magazine, healthylifestyle.gsu.edu, 
And at the top right, there's actually a tab where you can view all of our past cooking demonstration recipes. Some of them are things that I showed today, but there's also a ton of recipes that I've done. We've been doing it for, geez, I guess, uh, two years now. And uh, we've gone through a lot of different really fun and tasty recipes. You can scroll through there and look for some nutritious ideas if you're in the market for a new and fun recipe. Some other resources that I want to highlight, again, the Zapongo website is available there. The link to the MyPlate grocery list and weekly meal planner is available. The USQ Well platform is linked there, and there is our office EDWS website for those who want to get more information on some of these services that we offer. I do want to cover those in a bit more detail. One thing that we're really trying to promote, especially this month since it is National Nutrition Month, is we have health coaching. This for GSU employees is absolutely free. It is individualized health coaching to help you reach your health goals. We have experts in a variety of subject matter. Um, myself, as I mentioned, I'm a dietitian. So if you want to do some nutrition health coaching, this is a great month to do it. You can email us uh, and we can set you up with a one-on-one -on -one appointment. We also, through uh, my office mates, we have Tony Pelote. She is a, the, um, sorry, she is the health and wellness coordinator and she is an exercise physiologist. So she's able to help out with physical activity and exercise if you're looking to increase your movement and work on that component. She's a wonderful resource. You can email the same email and we can get you set up with some physical activity coaching. And then lastly, our director, Cheryl Johnson Ransaw, uh, she is able to help out with counseling and stress management. So if you are dealing with some mental health things or you're looking to handle stress in your life a little bit better, she's an excellent resource. So all of those are available through health coaching. Another resource we offer is Faculty and Staff Assistance, or FASA. This is for any sort of issue you may be facing. It can be a work conflict, or it can be some social situation or financial situation that you're dealing with completely outside of work. This is here to provide assistance and help you. You can schedule an appointment by emailing FASA at gsu.edu, or you can contact, if you're having an emergency, the emergency phone number listed there. It's available 24-7, 365 days out of the year. If you just want to get in contact with someone for a non-emergency situation, you can contact the main number listed on this page. Through USG, we also offer the KeyPro Employee Assistance Program. It's similar to FAFSA, giving you a variety of options to help with any issue you may be facing in your life. It is an external program, though, if you prefer to take that route. You can visit usg.mylifeexpert.com and use our company code USGCARES. You can also call to schedule an appointment. Another resource I want to mention is we do have a tobacco cessation program. If you currently use tobacco, quitting is one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself, but it can be difficult and you don't have to go at it alone. For more information on the program, you can email us at edws at gsu.edu. And lastly, I do want to highlight some upcoming events that we have. If you are on the Atlanta campus today, March 3rd, from 1230 to 230, we will be set up at the Urban Life Building in the West Exhibit Hall doing health screenings. We're going to do blood pressure checks, BMI checks, and body fat percentage checks, and we're partnering with the School of Nursing, and they'll be there helping us out. So if you'd like to come by and say hi, uh, get some free health screenings and information, we'd love to see you there. Next week on Thursday, March 10th, I'll be doing a live cooking demonstration. So if you were inspired by today's meal prep presentation and you want some more inspiration, you can join us for that cooking demonstration from 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Next Friday, March 11th, we'll have a virtual guided meditation session to help you relax from 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Wednesday, February 21st, we'll have a special Key Pro webinar in honor of National Nutrition Month. The topic will be eating your way to wellness. It's going to cover a variety of nutrition topics to help you make healthier choices. And then on Tuesday, March 29th, we have a very special Snack and Share support group. If you're unfamiliar with our Snack and Share support group, it's an event designed to give employees a safe and confidential space to come and just get things off their chest and talk about what's on their mind. It's a place for us to relax and de-stress together uh, and be supported by one another. The topic for this month is actually talking about the second anniversary of the COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, we have been dealing with this pandemic for two full years now, and there's a lot to process relating that, related to that. So we encourage you to come, 
hear your thoughts and your opinions and participate in that session. So we've reached the end of today's presentation. I do want to pause here and just give a couple moments to see if anyone has any additional questions or comments before we wrap up today. I'll be monitoring the chat for those. As a reminder, you will be getting a follow-up email with a link to today's recording, as well as a link to the resources mentioned in today's presentation. So I encourage you to check out those websites, use that grocery planner to help make healthier choices, and try to pick some small action items you can set up in order to start working on your nutrition. All right, I don't see any questions coming through at the moment. So I just wanna say thank you everyone for attending today. We greatly appreciate it. Again, we are doing health screenings today for free in the Urban Life West Exhibit Hall from 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. So if you wanna stop by on the Atlanta campus, we'd love to say hi to you. Otherwise, thank you again, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. <laughs>